What is up, Battle Buddies? We are back in Dallas once again at the Fair Park. That's right. But we're not here for the Texas State Fair. We're here for Foodie Land. Think of a fair of nothing but food. It's only been open for about two hours and it is already completely full. So actually this event started for, yeah, it started in California and somehow just made its way here to Texas. The first event was actually held in Houston, which was last weekend. So this weekend is the Dallas area where the fair park is, the State Fair of Texas. It's only the first year that it's ever been here in Dallas and it's only a three day event. We're gonna take you guys along with us and see how big of a food coma we can get into tonight. So let's go. So the first thing we got here is actually the bone marrow with mushrooms from Bone and Marrow. This is actually the first place we wanted to stop at because I was afraid it was gonna sell out. The guys over there torching the the bejesus out of this thing right here. <laughs> so it looks freaking phenomenal. If Liver King says it's good, it's gotta be good. So look at that. So they call this like nature's butter. Never had it before. Never. I've always wanted to try this. Oh, once you get to the mushrooms, where it's very savory and kind of salty, oh, it pairs really nice. The actual bone marrow has a consistency of like jello, like gelatin and fat, like very fatty. But it's not gross. It does have a subtle aftertaste of like bone. Like if you're familiar with like different types of broth, some katsu broth that involves bone, you have that um that earthy taste that follows it. Five out of five. Wait, we're can, starting off with a five we're out of five? Out with a five out of five. I can see why people might not like this because of the gelatin consistency and it's kind of fatty. It's good, five out of five. It smells like um, French onion soup. It's supposed to be gelatin textured, but it has crunchy bits in there. French onion soup, but as a solid, four and a half. Four and a half oh, out of so five. So close. Okay. okay. All right. You want to try some bread to go with it? I think oh, you're supposed maybe, to eat you know it. What? Maybe yeah. that'll change. You're it, supposed so to eat it with bread. bread. So dip the bread in there because you're supposed to eat it with the bread. That's why they serve it. No. <laughs> okay. Um. I already got some five. Five? Okay. I'm the last one to try it. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Texture is a big thing for me. When I'm eating meat, it cannot be slimy, it cannot be fatty. It, to me, looks like congealed broth. You know at the top of broth, whenever it's been sitting for a while and you get all that fat coming up there? That is what the bone marrow is. You're cooking it out when you're making a broth. So that's what this is, and it, I'm really nervous, but take a one for the team. It smells phenomenal. It smells so umami and savory, so we'll see. This melts in your mouth, and it is full of flavor. I just don't know if the texture's for me. So if you're very sensitive to like slimy textures or if you're very sensitive to like the way your texture is on your meat, I may stay away from this. The bread does help and it does taste kind of like the broth from the French onion soup, very flavorful. Unfortunately, I don't think I can give this a five out of five just for the texture alone. I'm gonna have to drop it down to a four because the flavor's there. If you love the flavor of like the meat and just marrow and savory, I would get this. I would stop and get this. Even begin. <laughs> Just find a spot that gets the sugar. It tastes like candy and sweet tea. It tastes so seems familiar. Almost like honey. Sugar tastes a bit different. What's a different flavor? Sugar? I think both are pretty good. However, I got more candy on the grape than I did the strawberry. A four. They're a pretty good snack. First of all, I feel like they put way too much candy on this one, but I don't know if we said this is from Tonkulu Bear. There's like three different places here for Tonkulu, and we went to Tonkulu Bear just because 
just, it sounded better, I guess. That is a lot of crunch, but the grape's not bad. I think it really pairs well with it because the grape is kind of sour, tart. So I don't know if you can see the difference in the candy coloring. This one's more of an amber color and this one's more of a translucent clear. This one tastes more caramelized as if the sugar cooked a bit yeah, longer. I was like, is that caramel or? This one tastes much cleaner and I think the candy pairs much better with the strawberry. I think the strawberry is just an elite fruit for this sort of treat. All right, so the grape is something that I wanted to try as well, but a lot of people say that they don't like it. Maybe the sugar? I wish the grapes were cold or frozen. The coating of the sugar is cooked to perfection. It's not burnt. So they know what to doing over here at Tonkulu Bear. I know it's strawberry. I think the juice from the strawberry really helps. Mm -hmm. Strawberry, hands down. Three out of five for me. So this is right next door to Tonkulu Bear and it's the freshly squeezed sugar cane. I've never had it. And you said you got the original flavor? Okay, so this is just the original sugar cane. That is kind of like sweet tea. It's not overly sweet like I thought it would be. Actually very earthy. I mean, I get it. I can kind of picture if you were to take a sugar cane and just like, like bite into it a little bit. I would give it a three. Maybe one of the flavored ones might get a higher rating, but not bad. It's right, it is almost like a sweet tea. And it's pretty fruity and very refreshing. Fruit, I almost want to say it's um, a peach or a mango. Sugarcane has that specific taste of very strong sweetness and very natural sweetness. I'd give it, I'd say a four. How to describe sugarcane? The best way I can explain this is like a root meets an apple meets coconut? No, no. An apple meets a certain type of root like jicama, and like a potato because it got like a, like a dirtiness type undertone of a taste, like, you know, root, that root taste. Uh, I'm gonna say four out of five. Uh, maybe I'm being biased because it was $10. I didn't know it was $10 until we checked. There's something sitting in that chair. Uh, and it's like terrifying. Look, step over oh. here a little bit. He's holding the potato. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna be honest about some things. There are a few vendors here that we are going to avoid only because sushi, we have a really good place that we get sushi from already, and spending money on sushi here that we don't know if it's good or not. We know we can get good sushi at the other place, as well as the Biadilla tacos. Yeah, same for tacos. Yeah. yeah. You can get tacos, or you can get tacos and tacos anywhere. <laughs> Especially so. here in Texas. So we're trying to save our room in our stomachs for some other food that we haven't tried yet. Like tankulu, we've never tried. Never tried tankulu. So Never had bone marrow. Yeah. Never had sugar cane drinks. Yeah, so this is a very good place to try new things that we've never tried. So the line for the Bidia tacos is really long and we're just gonna go ahead and avoid that. Which is crazy because, I mean, there's plenty of really, really good places here that have Bidia tacos. Yeah, so. if you're in Dallas, De La Fuente. Yeah, that's really For really Bidia good tacos. One. And for sushi, we love Kura. I mean, it's fresh. It's, so. it's good, it's on the plate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so when you purchase the animal over there and you say what flavor drink you want, which they have so many flavors, they give you a ticket with your number and then they have you wait in a line for odd numbers or even numbers to pick up your drink with your animal. So pretty organized system, I guess. Yeah. Just a pretty decent wait too. A lot of people, a lot of people. I said lemon tea, like the powder stuff. So as of right now, it doesn't look like we've seen any like indoor restrooms, but they do have plenty of porta potties with the outdoor like little sinks and stuff. I still recommend bringing some sanitizer wipes and some hand sanitizer though. Are you gonna try the balut? I don't know. You wanna, you wanna try, try the balut with me? No? Uh, I'll pass. <laughs> uh, I think I'll pass on the balut. They also have a lot of various vendors of different crafts and clothing, jewelry. These all seem to be on the outside. It looks like they're the, um, so this entire event is like very Instagrammable. So what I'm seeing now with the shops are like little shops that you would see on TikTok or 
what is it, TikTok shop? Mm -hmm. And Instagram shop or whatever it's called, or Facebook market too. So I feel like these are these little shops that just come out here and have a a brick and mortar, well, a brick and mortar type station. Of course, Aaliyah spots Bluey from a mile away. <laughs> little backpacks. Oh my God, um, I keep wanting to say bug. It's not bug, what is it? What's his name? Pachita. Pachita. <laughs> so restrooms are once you get into the building right over there it's right across from the history building so if you don't want to use porta potty that's where you go japanese souffle pancake by wobble bake and see it's just jiggling it's wobbling Again, I've seen this everywhere, and I've always wanted to try this. It was $16. I always wondered if it was like doughy inside. I mean, it isn't, you know, like kind of like raw, because it jiggles. I mean, it kind of, kind of, I mean, I don't know, let's find out. Okay. It is kind of doughy inside. Almost like a, a puff pastry. Very eggy. Minor sweetness just from the sugar, the, the sugar that they add into the pancake. Really good. Three out of five. Is that whipped cream or pancakes? That's all pancake. That tastes like straight whipped cream. There might be whipped cream in it. Because it looks like there's some kind of filling. No, it's just whipped up egg. It's probably it could be egg whites. That's also making it expand in like a large thick pancakes. I'd say five, it's a nice snack. All right, this isn't something that I've been super like anxious to try, but it's so aesthetically pleasing, like Instagrammable type food that I feel like it was a must. And the texture does look like, you know when you get like one of those omelet type, like for your sandwiches, that's what this gives me texture wise. And I'm not a huge fan of eggs, so I'm nervous now that Louis said it's very eggy. So I'm gonna play it safe and dip it in the syrup. That is basically like as if you whipped up some eggs and egg whites, mostly egg whites and just a smidge of the egg yolk, and you cooked it, that's the, it's like an egg souffle. It's not giving pancake, it's more like a baked egg with a hint of sweetness. So if you don't like like too much sweetness, this is a good option for you because it's not overly sweet at and all. And how are the flavors too? Of the cake or just the of topping? The pancake. Oh, okay. Or it could be the topping, I'm not sure. Surprisingly, I would give this a four. So I'm actually relieved to hear Aaliyah says she thinks the eye and nose were just bao bun dough because I honestly thought it was fondant and I was kind of worried about that for a second. <laughs> so it is very spongy. And we got the teriyaki chicken and they said it also comes with like their house made pineapple sauce with it. So kind of excited to try this. It kind of tastes like the chicken was stewed in like pineapple juice a little bit. It does have a little bit of a sweet aftertaste. The chicken is really tender and the dough is really soft. <laughs> I think I would give this a four. It's good, but part of me feels like maybe a beef one or the pork one would have had a little more flavor. Anytime we go out and do events like this, we are a family of three and we share 
everything. Drinks, food, because we want to taste a little bit of everything and not waste it. So just getting one bao bun for us all to try and if we like it, we'll go get another one. But instead of us each getting one, and it's worked out for us. So that's a good way for your family to save some money here. Like come and just each person pick a little something and then you come together and try it all together. So that's a little way to try more food without getting overly full. It is a little dry, but it's not bad. Three out of five. I love Spam Musubi. Traditionally, in most locations, the Spam Musubi is made with white rice. This has like seasoned rice. And the only time I've ever had Spam Musubi that's had seasoned rice with beans and a little bit of spice is a Guamanian Spam Musubi. It was freaking good. So let's try this one. So I think I'm mistaken. This rice isn't seasoned rice. I think it's just rice with some soy sauce that gave it that uh, distinctive color of the seasonings that I um, was describing earlier. The Spam isn't as salty and it isn't as thick as I would like it, just like a little sliver of, of Spam. It is good and it is hearty. It just doesn't have enough flavor for me. Three out of five. All right, so we're trying to get to the rest of the food before we lose some daylight for y'all. But you know, I've only had it at two different places. They're Hawaiian Bros, which is a chain, and then Mo Betta's, which I believe is another chain, but they're a little more down home. So that's the only thing I can compare this one to. Mo Betta's. Aaliyah, do you want Mo Betta's? <laughs> oh, she's, she already ran off. It needs more spam to rice ratio for the flavor has a little bit of a burn on it, the little char from the bottom pagao. of the pan, the pagao. That's kind of what this tastes like. Now, I like that, but that if it had more of that meat in there, it would have more flavor that it needs. Like you said, the saltiness. I give it a three out of five. It's filling, but you can go to something else. The rice is a different texture than what I'm used to. Still kind of greasy and oily. Seaweed's still seaweed. It's so pretty good, I'd say four. Okay, so as we're walking around, I just can't let go about how funny it is seeing all these grown adults carrying these giant baby bottles around <laughs> full of drinks. It's like the you can have like a small baby bottle or like the big ones, and it's just so funny seeing all these adults walking around with them, <laughs> drinking from them. <laughs> This is the cheese wheel pasta. They had four different flavors. They had a garlic lobster. They had the bacon, a black truffle. I'm not gonna lie, I got the bacon one because it was the cheapest one. Cause this was $22. So if you wanna put it in perspective, we got a cheese wheel pasta, a whole meal at Shades of Green. I'll link that video here for I believe roughly the same price. So let's try it and see if it's good. The line was ridiculously long, so we'll see. That bacon is strong. It's real bacon. It's not bacon bits. And it even has some sun-dried tomatoes and stuff in there. If they were able to throw some extra cheese on top, I feel like that would do so much better because you're getting that creaminess. Like you see, you get all that creaminess in the cheese from when they uh, mix it in the cheese wheel but it needs more cheese, in my opinion. But just a little more cheese and this would have been a five out of five. Actually, I think I'm still gonna give it a five out of five just because this is a filling dish. It's $22, but this is filling compared to a lot of the other filler meals around here. How much is this pasta again? 22. I'm gonna give this a four out of five. I feel like it just needs more, but I'm being biased too because I'm, I'm just not a fan of pasta like that. It is good. I would expect to have this at a restaurant. It's weird to see it out here. This is like, this is pretty restaurant quality. It's creamy, not salty at all. I don't taste much cheese here, 
but the bacon does add the flavor that it needs. Four out of five. The baking bits add really good savoriness to it. I'd say four, it's still like a pretty normal meal. You know I love pasta, it's still four, I really like it though. Would y'all yeah. rate it? Yeah, I four. rated it a five. What about you? So that must be two thirds. Yeah. Two thirds of an honor. So one tip, if you do decide to come out here, don't walk where the food aisles are. Walk towards the side where all the vendors are. It's less crowded and it's so much easier to walk through compared to where all the food stuff is at. We made it out of the madness just like that. Back to where we did our intro. Moms are showing your knees weak or arms spaghetti. All right, this event was very unique. Again, one of its first here in Dallas. A bunch of food, a bunch of food. You're not gonna be able to eat everything. Um, for those of you looking for alcohol, there really isn't any alcohol places other than them little, um, little, what would you call them? Just like carts. Like basically. they're little, little carts. Little with tents, them, Little yeah. carts with like the black box to sell water. There's no beer. So if you're looking for alcohol, you're not really gonna find it here. On the website, it says rain or shine. Luckily, we made it here where it's not raining today. It did sprinkle just a little bit, but it's supposed to rain the next two days. So those of you that are coming out here, Bring an umbrella, bring a poncho, and bring some Crocs. Unfortunately, there were a few items that we were looking for that either they were sold out of what we wanted or they're not here at all. We can't find them. All right, so favorite food? I like the pasta. To me, it's as good as you can get for this place. Favorite food? Um, I'd say the bell bun, because I, I just love bell buns. Bell buns? In, this, in the drinks, and the drinks are pretty refreshing. Okay. Well, Liver King said the bone marrow. <laughs> bone marrow was my favorite. So nothing here got a badge of honor. Badge of honor again. It's five out of five from each of each one of us. Mm -hmm. So the bone, marrow. the bone marrow didn't get a. Did it? It got a four for me. Yeah. So it didn't get a five out of five. Um, but it was out there. To come here isn't that expensive. It's just the food. But they do accept all credit cards. Every vendor accepts credit cards. So or debit cards. Yeah. So, so you can uh, max it out if you want. Yeah. Which, Especially with how expensive it is out here. So this total event, I think it's a three out of five. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We're glad to bring you out here with us. And let us know in the comments any of the food that we tried that you think looks good or what you would have eaten. Um, if you're in the Dallas area, check it out this weekend. Otherwise, they're heading out to Austin next. and Austin too? Yeah. Austin's oh, the next one. They just opened up. And... California, they have a few places out there. So take a look on their Instagram if there's one opening up near you and check it out and let us know what your thoughts are. And we'll see you next time. Right, thank you guys, bye. bye.